One of the more unsettling discoveries in the past half a century is that the universe is not locally real. In this context, real means that objects have definite properties independent of observation. An apple can be red even when no one is looking. Local means that objects can be influenced only by their surroundings and that any influence cannot travel faster than light. Investigations at the frontiers of quantum physics have found that these things cannot be both true. Instead, the evidence shows that objects are not influenced only by their surroundings, and they may also lack definite properties prior to measurement. This is, of course, deeply contrary to our everyday experiences. As Albert Einstein once bemoaned to a friend, do you really believe the moon is not there when you are looking at it. To adapt a phrase from author Douglas Adams, the demise of local realism has made a lot of people very angry and has been widely regarded as a bad move. Blame for this achievement has now been laid squarely on the shoulders of three physicists, John Closer, Elaine Aspect, and Anton Zeilinger. They equally split the 2022 Nobel Prize in Physics for experiments with entangled photons, establishing the violation of Bell inequalities and pioneering quantum information science. Bell inequalities refers to the pioneering work of Northern Ireland physicist John Stuart Bell, who laid the foundations for the 2022 Physics Nobel in the early 1960s. Colleagues agreed that the three had it coming deserving this reckoning for overthrowing reality as you know it. It was long overdue, says Sandu Popescu, a quantum physicist at the University of Bristol in England. Without any doubt, the prize is well deserved. The journey from fringe to favor was a long one. From about 1940 until as late as 1990, studies of so-called quantum foundations were often treated as philosophy at best and Rock pottery at worst. Many scientific journals refuse to publish papers on the topic, and academic positions indulging such investigations were nearly impossible to come by. In 1985, Popesco's advisor warned him against a PhD in the subject. He said, Look, if you do that, you will have fun for five years, and then you will be jobless, Popesco says. Today, Quantum data science is among the most lively subfields in all of physical science. It interfaces Einstein's overall hypothesis of relativity with quantum mechanics through the still strange way of behaving of dark openings. It directs the plan and capability of quantum sensors, which are progressively being utilized to concentrate on everything from quakes to dull matter. Furthermore, it explains the frequently befuddling nature of quantum trapped a peculiarity that is critical to present-day material science and that lies at the core of quantum processing. What even makes a quantum computer quantum? Nicole Youngle Halpern, a National Institute of Standards and Technology Physicist, asks rhetorically. One of the most popular answers is entanglement. And the main reason we understand entanglement is the grand work participated in by Bell and those Nobel Prize winners. Without an understanding of entanglement, we probably wouldn't be able to realize quantum computers. The trouble of quantum mechanics was never that it made the wrong predictions. In fact, the theory described the microscopic world splendidly from the start when physicists devised it in the opening decades of the 20th century. When Einstein, Boris Podolsky, and Nathan Rosen took the issue with, as they explained in their iconic 1935 paper, was the theory's uncomfortable implications for reality. Their analysis, known by their initials EPR, centered on a thought experiment meant to illustrate the absurdity of quantum mechanics. The goal was to show how under certain conditions the theory can break, or at least deliver nonsensical results that conflict with our deepest assumptions about reality. A simplified and modernized version of EPR goes something like this. Pairs of particles are sent off in different directions from a common source targeted for two observers, Alice and Bob, stationed at opposite sides of the solar system. Quantum mechanics dictates that it is impossible to know the spin, a quantum property of individual particles prior to measurement. 
Once Alice measures one of her particles, she finds its spin to be either up or down. Her results are random, and yet when she measures up, she instantly knows that Bob's corresponding particle, which had a random indefinite spin, must now be down. At first glance, this is not so odd. Maybe the particles are like a pair of socks. If Alice gets the right sock, Bob must have the left. But under quantum mechanics, particles are not like socks. And only when measured do they settle on a spin of up or down. This is EPR's key conundrum. If Alice's particles lack a spin until measurement, then how, as they whiz past Neptune, do they know what Bob's particles will do as they fly out of the solar system in the other direction? Each time Alice measures, she quizzes her particle on what Bob will get if he flips a coin, up or down. The odds of correctly predicting this even 200 times in a row are 1 in 1060, a number greater than the total number of atoms in the solar system. Yet, despite the billions of kilometers that separate the paired particles, quantum mechanics says Alice's particles can keep correctly predicting as though they were telepathically connected to Bob's particles. Designed to reveal the incompleteness of quantum mechanics, EPR eventually led to experimental results that instead reinforced the theory's most mind-boggling tenets. Under quantum mechanics, nature is not locally real. Particles may lack properties such as a spin-up or spin-down prior to measurement, and they seem to talk to one another no matter the distance. Because the outcomes of measurements are random, these correlations cannot be used for faster-than-light communication. Physicists skeptical of quantum mechanics propose that this puzzle could be explained by hidden variables, factors that existed in some imperceptible level of reality beneath the subatomic realm that contain information about the particle's future state. They hope that in hidden variable theories, nature could recover the local realism denied by quantum mechanics. One would have thought that the arguments of Einstein, Podolsky, and Rosen would produce a revolution at that moment, and everybody would have started working on those hidden variables, Popesco says. Einstein's attack on quantum mechanics, however, did not catch on among physicists, who, by and large, accepted quantum mechanics as is. This was a less thoughtful embrace of non-local reality than a desire not to think too hard. A head in the sand sentiment later summarized by American physicist N. David Merman as a demand to shut up and calculate. The lack of interest persisted in part because John von Neumann, a highly regarded scientist, had in 1932 published a mathematical proof ruling out hidden variable theories. Von Neumann's proof, it must be said, was refuted just three years later by a young female mathematician. Greek Herman, but at the time, no one seemed to notice. The problem of non-local realism would languish for another three decades before being shattered by Bell. From the start of his career, Bell was bothered by quantum orthodoxy and was sympathetic toward hidden variable theories. Inspiration struck him in 1952 when he learned that American physicist David Baum had formulated a viable non-local hidden variable interpretation of quantum mechanics, something von Neumann had claimed was impossible. Bell mulled the idea for years as a side project to his job working as a particle physicist at CERN near Geneva. In 1964, he recognized the same flaws in von Neumann's argument that Hermann had discovered, and then in a triumph of rigorous thinking, Bell concocted a theorem that dragged the question of local hidden variables from its metaphysical quagmire onto the concrete ground of experiment. Typically, local hidden variable theories and quantum mechanics predict indistinguishable experimental outcomes. What Bell realized is that under precise circumstances, an empirical discrepancy between the two can emerge. In the eponymous Bell test, an evolution of the EPR thought experiment. Alice and Bob received the same paired particles, but now they each have two different detector settings. 
Capital letter A and lowercase a. Capital letter B and lowercase b. These detector settings are an additional trick to throw off Alice and Bob's apparent telepathy. In local hidden variable theories, one particle cannot know which question the other is asked. Their correlation is secretly set ahead of time and is not sensitive to updated detector settings. But according to quantum mechanics, when Alice and Bob use the same settings, both uppercase or lowercase, each particle is aware of the question the other is posed, and the two will correlate perfectly, in sync in a way no local theory can account for. They are, in a word, entangled. Measuring the correlation multiple times for many particle pairs, therefore, could prove which theory was correct. If the correlation remained below a limit derived from Bell's theorem, this would suggest hidden variables were real. If it exceeded Bell's limit, then the mind-boggling tenets of quantum mechanics would reign supreme. And yet, in spite of its potential to help determine the nature of reality, Bell's theorem languished and noticed in a relatively obscure journal for years. The award honors Closer, Aspect, and Zeelinger, but it is a testament to all the researchers who were unsatisfied with superficial explanations about quantum mechanics and who asked their questions even when doing so was unpopular. Bell tests, Justina concludes, are a very useful way of looking at reality.